Welcome, Bitcoin fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod and happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Let's get it. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis and why the Bitcoin price action is up today. And quoting the high priest Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, it's just fun to know that every single money manager alive today will never beat Bitcoin facts. Also in today's show, spot Bitcoin ETF see record inflows after the July 4th dip. That's right. We right back on track. We'll also be discussing the United Kingdom High Court freezes Craig Wright's assets. It's about time you do that to fake Toshi. Just saying. He pretended to be Satoshi for how many years? And he got busted. We'll also be discussing Donald Trump 2024 victory may fuel a year-end Bitcoin price surge, according to the Financial Times. That's right. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin Prime to rally near nearly 80% to 100,000 per coin after this ongoing correction ends. According to this analyst, we'll also be discussing the latest from the macro guru, Raul Pao. He says the total crypto market cap is primed to explode by over 44x to $100 trillion. Also be sharing his latest allocation from his portfolio, which he reveals in the interview. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. Oh my gosh, it's finally almost here. JV is going to talk to us. Crypto news is near. I can't stand waiting. There is no debating. I waited all day. Maybe I need a life. But Bitcoin is all I can think. Welcome, crypto fam, and happy Sat Stacking Saturday. Let's freaking go. If you're new to the channel, be sure to smash those likes and subscribe to the number one day of the Bitcoin pod. Also, hit that bell icon, turn on all notifications, and repost this over on X. We're going to be live for the next couple of hours. This is pod episode number 1692. I'm your host, JV. It's July 6, 2024. Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. The markets are pumping back in the green, which I love to see. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Bitcoin back above 58 G's, baby. Up 2.5% on the day. Ether back above 3,000. Up 2.5% on the day. XRP up 5%. Trading just shy of 45 cents. Solana up 6%. Cardano up 6%. AVAX up almost 9%. So across the board, pretty impressive gainers. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap sits at only $2.13 trillion, which is mind-boggling. And we got about $60 billion worth of volume in the past 24 hours. Hours with Bitcoin dominance at 53.7% and the Ether dominance 17.3%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, we got Core up 25%, Shiba Inu up 16%, and Jasmine up 15%. Below that, ENS, Celestia, Akash, Pendle, and Arbitrum. Which particular alts, fam, if any, are you bullish on for this bull? Holla. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective on the day. Finally, everything back in the green. It's about time because past few days, it's been like virtually everything in the red. So I love to see this and pretty impressive gainers across the board as the market cap of crypto continues to climb. And zooming out on the monthly to get a broader perspective, unfortunately, let's not forget virtually the entire market bleeding and in the red uh, when it comes to the alt coin market, that is, as you can see on your screen. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're even lower today than yesterday, which is a good sign that we'll continue to pump. We are in fear, not extreme fear, but on the cusp. We're at 26. Yesterday was a 29. Uh, last week, a 30. And last month, a 78. And extreme greed. And clearly, the lower this number is, the more likely of a pump. The higher this number is, the more likely of a dump. Good to see everyone in the house. Let's continue with our technical analysis, aka astrology for the broskies, uh, shall we? We'll discuss why the Bitcoin price is pumping right now. Isn't that a good topic? Let me know. So yeah, why is the price up today? Uh, here's why. Bitcoin rebounded 6% July 6, reaching now uh, 57 after hitting a five-month low the previous day. I think we even tapped just 58 just a moment ago. This recovery indicates traders are beginning to overcome the bearish effects of the Mt. Gox 8 billion BTC reimbursement. And the recent Bitcoin sell-offs by the U.S. and German 
governments. Over the past 24 hours, top analysts and influencers have been working to downplay the impact of Mt. Gox and the Bitcoin sell-offs by the German and U.S. governments on Bitcoin's long-term bullish outlook. That includes Ki Yongju, founder and CEO of on-chain analytics platform CryptoQuant, who reminded traders that the governments had control over $8 billion worth of BTC, which is merely 4% of the total $225 billion that has flown into the Bitcoin market since 2023, as he outlines here on X. And uh, in other words, the Bitcoin market has adequate liquidity to absorb the impact of government-led Bitcoin sell-offs, especially amid the fears that the German government may dump the remainder of its Bitcoin holdings, which is roughly 42,000 BTC as of today. And that can occur in the coming days. Similarly, independent market analyst trader Taren Grade likens the current Bitcoin market sell-off to the past black swan events, which led to sharp rebounds and subsequent extended bull cycles, quoting them here. In 2016, 2020, and 2024, all years of the halving, Bitcoin moved in the same pattern. And besides 2020, Bitcoin fake out was seen below the trend line. After reclaiming above the trend line, a bull run follows. Send it. Now, analyst Rec Capital argue that the current Bitcoin bull market sell-off is part of the cyclical cycle that occurs after a Bitcoin halving event. And he's right. In a post- uh, having trend, Bitcoin often experiences a significant price drop for several months as the market adjusts to the new supply dynamics. I mean, this shows you the Bitcoin slash USD monthly prices. And I mean, chart doesn't lie. You can see where we're currently at. And uh, we're about to rip, family. However, as the reduced supply begins to impact the market, the price eventually recovers and often enters the strong upwards trend due to the lower supply with the higher demand driving the prices up. Now, the Bitcoin sharp recovery today takes cues from the U.S. stock market rally to a record high. In a post-holiday season with thin trading volume, the S&P reached its 34th record high of the year. Equities rebounded after a volatile period following data that showed a slowdown in the U.S. hiring and the highest job rate since 2021. And as a result of disappointing job data, the Wall Street bets are now pointing to a 72% probability of a rate cut in September compared to 55% just a month ago. Rate cuts are typically bullish for Bitcoin and the riskier assets, given they reduce the opportunity costs of holding lower yielding U.S. Treasury bonds. For instance, the Bitcoin ETFs attracted $143 million to its coffers on July 5th when the U.S. jobs data was released. And earlier in the week, these ETFs have witnessed two days of consecutive outflows. So now let's discuss Bitcoin futures funding rate jumping. The Bitcoin price recovery further accompanies a strong jump in its funding rates in the futures market, even though the open interest has declined significantly in that same period. For example, as of July 6, Bitcoin futures funding rate was net positive at 0.178% per week, up from 0.044 per week two days ago. Meanwhile, the open interest reflects the total number of unsettled contracts dropped to around $28 billion from $31 billion in the same period. Simply put, the traders are confident in the upwards price movement and are willing to pay the higher rates to maintain their long positions. Bitcoin's lower open interest and higher funding rates further indicate a phase where the weaker hands are exiting their positions. Peter Shifties, while more confident traders or institutions are maintaining or increasing their exposure, anticipating a price increase. Now for a quote from the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, from a recent interview on the beach over there in El Salvador. It's just fun to know that every single money manager alive today will never beat Bitcoin. That's fact. The exact percentage that Bitcoin is up since the inception of, you know, I mean, the Genesis block is something staggering, like 60 million percent, something like that, but don't quote me. And uh, let, now let's check out some of the live chart action. We'll start with the one month and we'll zoom in. Let me switch the scene up so you can see it better on the screen. There you go. You can see we're currently hovering at 58,000. This is live and in the flesh right now. These are live charts brought to you by TradingView via Coinbase. And uh, yeah, looking very bullish on the monthly chart. They say when in doubt, out, just zoom out. And now let's zoom in some. We're going to look at the uh, the one week, then we'll look at the one day. Here we go. We do have some bullish targets uh, breaking out here on the one week chart. We have a bullish flag. You can see in the purple sitting at around the 90,000 mark. And we also have a big fat target sitting at all the way 119. Let's just say 120. It's 119.8. And that's a bullish flag, as you can see in your screen. So the monthly chart is bullish. The weekly chart is bullish. And let's zoom in some more, eh? We'll look at the one day and then we'll look at the four hour. Here's the one day chart. 
Again, live and in the flesh right now, brought to you by TradingView via Coinbase. We do have a target to the downside. Uh, in the pinkish red, sitting at 47.7, a potential bottom. I'd say if 56, 55 don't hold, that could be the next potential bottom. But we did bounce pretty strong off of 53 yesterday, like a spring coil. So keep that in mind, family. And let me know if you think the bottom is already in. We're going to look at next the, uh, the four-hour chart, one of my favorites. This is, again, live and in the flesh, looking very bullish. We got one, two, three, four, five consecutive green candles on the four-hour chart. Prior to that, we got a little red, little green, little red with some big green action Jackson. That was the result of yesterday when we tapped that 53.5-ish bottom. We had a big green bullish uh, you know, candle followed by another big green bullish candle. And then we had some sideways trading action and we're pumping again as of this morning. We'll look at one more chart. We'll look even zoomed in more on the one hour. And you can see there is a rise in wedge pattern breakout. Uh, and we do have some targets. We do have a target, you know, where we're currently at it, roughly 58, 58, 4. And we have a target just south at 54, 6. And let's dive into our next way of the day. A, eh? let's discuss the Bitcoin ETFs finally back in the green with the inflows. It's about time. Spot Bitcoin ETFs see record inflows after the July 4th dip ready to rip. That's right. Uh, US-based spot ETFs for Bitcoin experienced a surge in inflows July 6, following the Bitcoin price drop into 54 just day earlier on July 4th. And according to Farside investors, the spot Bitcoin ETFs saw their largest net inflows in a month with 143 million flowing in. The Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund let the inflows in with 117 million, while the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF recorded a net inflow of 30 million, while ARK21 shares Bitcoin ETF and VanEck saw inflows of 11 milli and virtually 13 million respectively. Then we have the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust saw a net outflow of 28 million. What else is new, eh? Now, despite the recent market turbulence, the substantial inflows into the ETFs suggest institutional investors and large-scale buyers are taking advantage of the Bitcoin price dip to accumulate Bitcoin at the lower prices. You know, there's some strategic buyers out there. You got the Black Rocks, the rest of the institutions. You got the uh, micro strategies. You have the, uh, what's Kathy Wood's company? ARC21 and all them, you feel me? Now, Hunter Horsley, the CEO of Bitwise Asset Management, highlighted his team's efficiency in acquiring Bitcoin at a cost of less than half a basis point. Horsley highlighted a strong outlook for the Biddy, suggesting the current market conditions present a valuable buying opportunity for both new and existing investors. Quoting him here, the outlook for Bitcoin has never been stronger. For many who don't yet have exposure, this week is a chance to buy the dip. BTFD family, how many of you already did? Let me know. During the first week of July, BitB registered inflows exceeding 66 mil, increasing its total Bitcoin holdings to over 38,000 biddies. Renowned Bitcoin critic Peter Shifty also offered his perspective on the resilience of the Bitcoin ETF investors. Despite recent market fluctuations, Peter Shifty observed that these investors remain committed to holding their assets, showing no signs of panic. Quoting him here, so far there is no sign of panic. It'll likely take a much larger drop in Bitcoin Bitcoin before they finally capitulate. Now I'm going to flip that on Peter Shifty. Once Bitcoin rips to 100,000, I think that's when the Peter Shifties, including Peter Shifty himself, will capitulate. What are your thoughts, fam? He further predicted that a significant sell-off could occur soon, potentially leading to a capitulation amongst Bitcoin hodlers. I say we're going to see a massive capitulation from gold hodlers into Bitcoin as Bitcoin overtakes the market cap of gold. But I digress. Bitcoin fell to 55.2 on Coinbase after the collapsed Japanese crypto exchange Mt. Gox transferred 47,229 biddies worth around $2.7 billion at the current prices to a new wallet address and its first major transaction since May. So there you go, yo. A lot of uh, debtors or creditors are being... Uh, paid back. So there's supposed to be a massive sell-off, but it's all speculation regarding how much of that Mt. Gox BTC will actually be sold and how much will continue to be hodled. Here's the latest from Fake Toshi and uh, Peter McCormick. Uh, the headline reads, United Kingdom High Court freezes Craig Wright's assets. Ha ha. 
This guy pretended to be fake Toshi. I mean, he pretended to be Satoshi for so long. We know he's fake Toshi. The high court of the UK issued a world freezing order against computer scientists and businessmen. Greg Wright's assets. Legal documents filed on July 5th revealed Wright's assets were frozen to help podcast hosts. An entrepreneur, Peter McCormick, sued by Wright for libel in 2019, recouped roughly one and a half million British pounds, which is almost two million USD in legal fees. Yeah, uh, the court system is not cheap, family. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, Cointelegraph reached out to McCormick, but McCormick didn't respond. But you can see the actual case here. You can see the legal battle between Wright and McCormick began with comments McCormick made against Wright and several tweets in a YouTube video where McCormick accused the computer scientist and entrepreneur of fraudulently asserting he was Satoshi, the synonymous inventor of Bitcoin. And following McCormick's statements, Wright filed a lawsuit against the podcaster claiming McCormick defamed his character. What balls you must have to know you're a fraud and to sue someone else for just pointing out the obvious. I think the entire world has known Craig Wright as a fraud and not Satoshi since the very beginning. No one believed that clown, and he all the podcaster McCormick did was share his beliefs, and then he got a stupid, silly lawsuit, which cost him $2 million to defend himself. This is the crazy world we live in, fam. Wright began uh, claiming he was a uh, fabled Satoshi in 2016, used the claim as a basis to file lawsuits against 13 Bitcoin core developers. In my opinion, this Craig Wright fool belongs in prison for messing with uh, Bitcoiners, especially core developers. Not cool. The Australian computer scientist argued that the developers violated his copyrights on the Bitcoin white paper and certain features of the decentralized protocol, which he didn't invent. Like Bitcoin's database. Jesus. Now, the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, better known as COPA, an industry group compromised with several defendants listed in Wright's lawsuit, provided at least 50 pieces of evidence accusing Wright of forgery. Jesus. In their closing arguments, attorneys for COPA stated, Wright has invented an entire biographical history, producing one tranche after another of forged documents to support it. Criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance. After weighing the evidence, the court ruled that Wright was not Nakamoto. Wow, I'm shocked. Ending the intellectual property battle that could have had massive implications for the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. Judge James Miller's landmark ruling conclusively proving that Wright's claims of being an inventor of Bitcoin were false, established the legal foundation, absolving McCormick of defaming Wright's character and the right to legal compensation. Well, I hope McCormick not only gets his $2 million back, it costs him in legal expenses, I hope he gets 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million from all the bullshit he had to deal with as a result of that fraudster, fake Toshi. Here's the latest with Trump. Uh, the headline reads, Donald Trump 2024 victory may fuel year-end Bitcoin price surge, according to this report by the Financial Times. Uh, shout out to the Financial Times. Uh, despite expectations of a post-having rally, Bitcoin struggled to gain momentum since April, facing various factors such as sales of seized assets by the U.S. and German authorities and the overhang of $9 billion in Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash sales from the defunct Japanese exchange Mt. Gox. I have no doubt that m much of that Bitcoin cash is definitely going to dump, so so be careful out there if you're holding on to Bitcoin Cash family as the market cap of it is way inferior compared uh, to Bitcoin. So it won't take as much dumpage to cause mass carnage. You've been warned. However, market participants are increasingly discussing the possibility of a Trump trade that can boost the Bitcoin price in the second half of the year. Send it. Following the having event in April, that was on the 19th. We actually ushered it in here live on the show. We had a Bitcoin having watch party. Let me know if you are a part of it. It was pretty lit. During which the daily supply of the Bitcoin available to the miners got cut in half. The Bitcoin price has decreased by over 20%. In the past month, whoa. Now, several factors contributed to the lackluster performance, including selling pressure from authorities holding over $15 billion worth of Bitcoin over the past weeks and a Bitcoin basis trade, uh, dampening volatility by the hedge funds. Traders and analysts have been searching for the catalyst to drive the next upwards movement for the Bitcoin price. And according to the Financial Times, market optimism surrounding a potential Trump victory in the upcoming U.S. elections, November 5th can't come fast enough, is growing. Traders and Analysts perceive Trump as a more pro crypto candidate. Well, let's keep it 100. Sleepy Poopy Pants Joe is anti crypto. 
So he's not more of a pro-crypto. Trump is pro-crypto, at least according to his own statements. And Sleepy Poopy Pants Joe is anti-crypto uh, regarding his own statements. So, I mean, come on. Industry executives hold the Trump administration, coupled with a strong Republican showing in Congress, will lead to more favorable and clear crypto regulations. And according to Manuel Villegas and Julius Bayer analysts, the expectation that Trump's energy policy proposals can benefit crypto mining firms, potentially enabling alternative energy sources for Bitcoin mining. Trump wants the remaining Bitcoin to be mined in the USA. And in contrast, uh, concerns about Biden's prior tax propositions on crypto miners have been raised, such as a proposed 30% levy. So he just wants to make it as difficult for as possible for people in the United States to mine Bitcoin, acquire Bitcoin. He wants to tax it out the kazoo because he's an enemy of Bitcoin. And if you can't see that, come on. Anyways, per the report, the potential implications of Trump's policies on financial markets have sparked interest. If Trump's policies lead to increased U.S. deficit, more tariffs on foreign goods and tax cuts. It could result in higher inflation and U.S. Treasury yields. This scenario is known as fiscal dominance, and it could affect the Bitcoin price, which has shown a correlation with crucial U.S. Treasury markers, according to Geoff Kendrick, analyst of Standard Chartered. A steeper curve and higher break-even rate could push the Bitcoin price higher as it acts as a hedge against declining confidence in the U.S., Treasury market. Nonetheless, the likelihood of a Trump trade and its impact on the Bitcoin momentum largely depends on the opponent Trump faces in the election. Real clear politics betting average currently puts Trump's odds at 55%, at Biden at 16.5%. If Biden remains in the race, the Bitcoin bulls could be energized. However, if a new candidate emerges with a chance against Trump, the report notes that the Bitcoin price performance may remain subdued. Nonetheless, narratives and perceptions play a significant role in driving the crypto market. And if enough people believe in a Trump victory, it could positively influence the Bitcoin price action. Uh, so there you have it, man. Let me know if you think Trump will win the election and how do you think that will impact the bitty. Anyways, next story of the day, we're going to discuss Bitcoin uh, to 100,000 as a target, according to this analyst. Then we'll be discussing the latest from the macro guru, Raul Powell, projecting uh, the crypto market cap hitting 100 trillion, which is ultimately a 50x from here. To be more precise, it's 44x, but hey, close enough. So yeah, let's discuss this 100k target. First and foremost, Bitcoin prime to rally nearly 80% after the ongoing correction ends. And that's according to this analyst uh, by the name of Credible Crypto. According to the analyst, Bitcoin still in a long-term bullish despite the retracement and Bitcoin may still see a big rally after the ongoing correction. But Credible knows it will take Bitcoin a bit more time before Bitcoin witnesses the beginning of the new uptrend, uh, quoting him here from this post he actually did on X. And shout out to a Credible Crypto as well. Spot buyers don't have to be too worried here, in my opinion. As per prior updates, we can technically fall a lot lower on the high time frame without invalidating the higher time frame bullish structure. And what comes after this correction is our next major leg to 100,000 per biddy. That being said, if you are going to be buying on the way down, you need to be okay with being underwater for a bit. And at this time, we got Bitcoin right on the cusp of 58,000, indicating an upside potential of nearly 80%. If Bitcoin hits the analyst's target, however, Credible warns that the current correction could gather more momentum amid the rising levels of open interest. Open interest referring to the total number of unsettled contracts with a rising figure indicating that the traders are taking on leverage to get Bitcoin exposure. The analyst notes that the high levels of open interest coupled with Bitcoin holders unloading their coins on the spot market is a recipe for a more sustained Bitcoin downtrend, as he shares here. A short squeeze is a matter of time time in my opinion. But as long as the fresh longs keep piling in on the way down in front of the spot-driven sell-off, it's likely going to get worse before it gets better. And he continues regarding the altcoins. They likely get hit if Bitcoin does continue lower. Again, some altcoins are in or completing major distribution. So these may get hit and continue to bleed after, while others have barely moved up off their lows will probably get hit too. But in my opinion, you should be less concerned about these as they don't have much in terms of gains 
to give back. And going to his actual uh, tweet, I might as well just read it to you, and then we'll dive into the latest from the macro guru, uh, Raul Pau. Stopped out my lungs overnight, gave back a lot of my recent gains, but it is what it is. We haven't yet hit the 56 lows, but it seems like those lows will be taken sooner or later, and that officially opens the door to the 53 region as the next major area of support. And ironic enough, we did tap 53.54 just the other day. That was the bottom before we sprung back. We have seen our spot premium decline by about 50% thus far, so seems like this is a definitely a spot sell-off driving the price lower here. What's also notable is the open interest really hasn't budged on this drop. In fact, it has only climbed higher despite repeated long liquidations on every shove down. A short squeeze is a matter of time, in my opinion. But as long as the fresh longs keep piling in on the way down in front of the spot-driven sell-off, it is likely going to get worse before it gets better. And going to a buddy's wedding this weekend, so it won't be too active, but for some things to keep in mind over the next few days, number one, best to avoid new longs and trades until we see some positive PA develop, development, ideally in the form of a major liquidation or some long time frame impulse of PA. Number two, alts likely get hit if Bitcoin does continue lower. Again, some of the alts are in or completing a major distribution. So these may get hit and continue to bleed after, while others have barely moved up off their lows. And and uh, will probably get hit too. But in my opinion, you should be less concerned about these that they don't have much uh, in terms of gains to give back. And number three, finally, spot buyers don't have to be too worried here, in my opinion. As per the prior updates, we can technically fall a lot lower to the higher time frame without invalidating the higher time frame bullish structure. And what comes after this correction is our next major leg to $100,000. That being said, if you're going to be buying on the way down, you need to be okay with being underwater for a bit. If you don't think you can do that, that. Wait for number one above to play out before dipping your toes in. And with that being said, I'll see y'all soon on the other side. Uh, so there you have it. That's coming from Credible uh, Crypto. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysis. Now for our featured story of the day, the total crypto market cap is primed to explode by over 44x to $100 trillion. According to the macro guru, Raul Pao, let's break this baby down, as you can see in the headline right here. So yeah, Macro Guru and the Real Vision CEO, Raul Pao, says the total crypto market cap primed to skyrocket to a staggering 100 trillion. In a new interview on the Blockworks Macro YouTube channel, the former Goldman Sachs exec says, if the digital asset industry continues on with the same rate of growth, its total market cap will shoot up about 44x in less than 10 years. And according to Powell, the explosion of the total market cap in crypto assets is going to be the greatest wealth generating opportunity ever. Do you hear that? It's going up forever, Melda. Uh, quoting him here, it is a two and a half trillion market cap today, now even less after the dip. If we just extrapolate out the trend rate of the growth, it gets to 100 trillion by about 2032. So this is the biggest wealth generating opportunity in all human history. Let me know if you agree with that sentiment and very bold words there. The total market cap is sitting at 2.24 trillion at this time. According to the coin gecko, the macro guru notes that the trader should be wary of adapting a or adopting a tribal mentality when it comes to digital assets and taking on maximum risk. As he shares here, our job within this is now not to get philosophical and tribal about what to invest and screw it up. Our job is to maximize the opportunity to the best that we can. And that's a balance of how you take risk because a lot of people go max 10 risks. No, 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 no. Look, if it is going from two and a half trillion to a hundred trillion, you don't need to take max risks. You can just capture the bulk and then do it a bit of the tail on the side. Powell goes on to say that most of his crypto portfolio, remember earlier I said I'd reveal what his latest portfolio allocation is? Well, here we go. His portfolio is in smart contract platforms such as Ethereum rival Solana, and he believes it will, uh, it and other alts, have more upside potential than the King Crypto BTC, quoting uh, Raul. 90% of my liquid net worth is basically allocated right now to Solana. I'm going to repeat that one time. 90% of my liquid net worth is basically basically allocated right now to Solana. It's hard for me to fathom that, but uh, teach their own. I don't have much Bitcoin right now. Doesn't mean I don't like Bitcoin. I just think the others go up more. Simple as that. So that's 
pretty wild because, uh, you know, he must be very wealthy. I mean, he's the macro guru for Christ's sake. But to have 90% of your liquid assets, liquid net worth in Solana, a Sam coin, that just shows you how bullish he is on Solana. Personally, I'm not a fan of Solana. However, teach their own. I know many of you are bullish on Solana. So let me know your thoughts with him having 90% of his portfolio in a Sam coin. I find that Again, mind-boggling, but hey, to each their own, tis what it is. And to watch the video he did recommending, uh, you know, this, not recommending it, but revealing his allocation as well as projecting Bitcoin hitting 100, not Bitcoin, but the crypto market cap hitting 100 trillion market cap. Check the show notes below the video in the description. Now, clearly the Bitcoin market cap is only like 1 trillion, like ballpark. So for Bitcoin to hit 100 trillion would be 100x from here. But for crypto, it's a modest 44x because it's just above 2 trillion at today's prices. Now, clearly, if the market cap rose like that, we could all speculate Bitcoin. I mean, if the market cap 100x from here, or let's just say 50x, then Bitcoin has the potential to 50x in price action. You know what I mean? So we got to keep that in mind as well. Scan the QR and buy the dip. Smash the like button and huddle for life, family. Thank you, fam. Sold to zero, says Muhammad.